Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video, we're going to be dual booting Windows 11 and Windows XP. Why anyone would have any idea on why they would do this is beyond me. However, I think it's just a fun experiment to see if we can dual boot one of Microsoft's best operating systems with their newest. Obviously, Windows 11 isn't out publicly yet, but it's in the dev channel. And so we'll be taking a look at how we can actually dual boot this and seeing how it works. Now, I'll be doing everything in a virtual machine simply because it's easier and it's quicker. So let's get into the video. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is create a new virtual machine. I'll use a blank install disk. And we're going to go ahead and just start off with Windows XP. The ISO I have is Windows XP Home Edition. So I'm going to just do that and name it Windows 11 XP. Now because we're dual booting, I'm gonna change the disk size to 100 gigabytes and customize the hardware. Windows 11 doesn't run on less than four gigabytes of RAM, so we're gonna crank it up to four because four gigabytes is the maximum that Windows XP will run on, assuming you're on the 32-bit. And we're gonna go ahead and finish. Actually, I lied, we do not need a 100 gigabyte hard drive right now. Um, we are going to go ahead and delete that and add a new one and we're just going to make this 20 gigabytes we can expand this disk later and by expanding it it creates a brand new partition and we won't have to worry about partitioning or anything it does it for us all right so of course this is literally just our standard windows xp setup here's our 20 gig unpartitioned space we're going to reformat this as ntfs just because we're not worrying about this. We're installing Windows XP like we would on a real computer, going through using the whole hard drive, because then we'll go through and extend our drive so that we have a partition to install Windows 11 to. Really, this is way easier than dual booting Windows 98 and Windows 10 like I did a few videos ago, because simply it really just clicks together and it all works. Now, as Windows setup is copying files, I want to show how we're actually going to get Windows 11 on here. Because installing Windows 10 and upgrading to Windows 11 is simply too much time, here's an ISO. Which, if you don't know, Microsoft doesn't give ISOs for Windows 11. So how did I get this? To get this ISO, I simply use this app called UUP Dump. This basically downloads the installations from Microsoft and then converts them into an ISO. So obviously we're going to use the latest dev build with the 64-bit architecture. And then it's going to show us, okay, we have the cumulative update for Windows 11, build 22000.71. And all we have to do is click on that and then click next. And then select what editions we want and then next again. And then it'll download simply like a 5 megabyte file and it's a command prompt, all you have to do is run it and it will literally compile a brand new ISO right on your computer from Microsoft servers. So honestly, it's pretty cool. Windows 11 requires TPM 2.0 and UEFI and our brand new Windows XP VM doesn't have UEFI for the fact that UEFI isn't supported on Windows XP. So how are we gonna use this ISO? And that is where this comes in. This is the ISO that I created specifically for this video. This is what I used UUP dump on. And we're going to go ahead and open this in Power ISO. And now we're going to open a Windows 10, or really any Windows 10 installer. We're just going to open that too. All we had to do was go in the Windows 11 ISO, go into Sources, and then scroll down and find the install.wim file. From here, all we had to do was copy this. We had to copy install.wim go into the Windows 10 image, do the same thing, go into sources, scroll down, and in here you'll find install.esd. What we have to do is simply delete install.esd and paste install.wim into this ISO. And then we can go ahead and save the ISO. And that's all we did to get this Windows 11 modified ISO. I simply copied the Windows 11 install wim and replaced the install esd on a Windows 10 ISO. And that's it. That's how we got this completely functional Windows 11 ISO that will boot on legacy systems and bypass TPM. All right, so we are in our XP VM, and what we have to do is just go through and set it up, and now I have to find a product key. All right, and of course, once that product key is entered, we're just going to go through and just click the standard things because we just want a standard install of Windows XP. We don't need anything special for this to just work. So we're going to go ahead and click on the IDE drive, and click expand and then change our maximum disk size to 80 gigabytes 
because it currently is at 20 and we want to add 60 so maximum is going to be 80. Once we click expand, it will say we have to repartition the disk and expand file systems, which is exactly what we want. We're going to go ahead and switch the ISO to our Windows 11 modified that we just created and go ahead and power on the machine and go ahead and boot into the boot menu and then choose CD-ROM. The first thing we're going to see here is actually the Windows 10 logo. Why it's the Windows 10 logo? Because we're booting off of a Windows 10 installer. It's going to install Windows 11, but the installer is physically Windows 10. So we can see it still says copyright 2020. Of course, we don't have a product key, so we're going to go ahead and skip that. And since I only chose Windows Pro, it's not going to give us an option. It's going to go ahead with Windows Pro. And of course, last updated June 2021, these are the new software terms for Windows 11. We are going to click Next, Custom, and here we can see here's our 60 gigs of unallocated space. So we're going to choose that, and now we're installing Windows 11. And of course, like I said, here is the now Windows 11 installer image and in fact something that I really found interesting is that they bolded this text I don't know if this was seen in the leaked build but since no one's really clean installing Windows 11 from an ISO because it doesn't really exist no one really gets to see this and so I found that a little interesting I really don't know if it looks better or if it looks worse uh, it's confusing to me a little bit although what I can notice is that this loading wheel doesn't really look centered and here is the Windows 11 setup. I really prefer this setup over Windows 10's. The Windows 10 setup was really colorless and it was boring, um, but this one really brings back color and interesting things to the Windows setup. Um, but of course, that's not what this video is about. This is about dual booting. So we're just gonna go ahead and try to get this set up as quick as possible. All right, and here we are inside of our very blown up Windows 11. So what I'm going to have to do is go ahead and install VMware tools and I believe that the Windows XP and Windows 11 slash 10 VMware tools use the same version if I'm, I'm hoping so. Um, and just to show that this is Windows 11, here is 21H2 22000.71. Um, for some reason, I'm not sure why in the VM this is, oh there we go. Finally, we have the curved windows. They weren't curved for a little bit. I was really getting worried, but okay. So we can go ahead and do that. And now we are here in Windows 11. So this is our Windows 11 copy. And if we go here, we can see that there is our Windows XP installation. And I just want to just play around and see if we can run some XP apps. Notepad. Notepad is the same notepad, just a different icon. But here's the whole point of this. Dual booting. With Windows XP, it already detects that it's an older version of Windows, so all we have to do is restart. There's no messing around with Easy BCD. And here we can see that there is our two options. Windows 11, for some reason, shows up as Windows 10. It does that on my main computer too, I truly have no idea why. But we're going to want to boot into Windows XP, so we're going to go ahead and click earlier version of Windows. Our system is going to go ahead and restart, and it's going to boot into Windows XP. And like I said, we are in Windows XP, and we can go ahead and access our Windows 11 drive just like that, and anything won't even run, because all of these applications are 64-bit, and this version of XP is 32-bit. So, with that being said, that is how we dual boot Windows 11 and XP. It is way easier than 98 and 10, and honestly, I don't know why anyone would practically do this, but it was a nice experiment. And so with that being said, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of weird, interesting videos and even device restorations. And so I'll see you all in the next one.